it's nice to see you again. And if you're new, welcome. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. Today we're going to talk about adding DIY storage to your bathroom. This is my bathroom. It is tiny, uh, but it works for us. The thing that is the most frustrating with this bathroom, however, is when we moved in, there was a pedestal sink, a toilet, and a tub. Zero storage. Zero. And the little linen closet that we do have in the hallway is eight inches deep. It was a total afterthought when this house was built in the 40s. So if you put in one set of sheets folded very strategically, it pretty much takes up the whole shelf. So we've had to be very crafty in coming up with storage solutions. So we've done a couple of things. This was a horrible, horrible solution, but I put a bookcase on top of the toilet tank, which I know is a horrible idea, but it was really the only solution I had in the beginning. So we're renters. I don't want to do anything too permanent like redoing the whole bathroom or putting in cabinets, but I've become really good at adding storage solutions for my clients by using a cleat system. And this particular bathroom has plenty of space over the toilet that could be utilized. So today I'm going to show you how to add shelves very inexpensively and show you some options if you don't have a closet style toilet. So let's get started. The first thing I do is take a trip to my local hardware store. In this case, Lowe's is really close to me and they have an entire aisle dedicated to MDF boards, pine boards, oak boards. So you can really get as detailed and customized as you want with your look. I'm going for something that's going to be very inexpensive. In this case, I want to make sure that I'm finding something that uh, will hold any weight that I put on it. But, but also works for the depth. And in this case, I wanted something that was about 12 to 14 inches deep. So in looking for that, the best solution I could find was a long pine board, 10 feet. And thankfully, all of your hardware stores will cut these down for you. So I measured. Now, again, this is a home built in the 40s, so nothing is square. So without getting into my mathematical brain and trying to figure out what trapezoid to cut, I measured the back wall. And unfortunately, as it comes forward, it graduates out. So it is a really weird shaped triangle. And as it got taller, it got narrower and then it expanded and then it became narrow again. So I decided just make it simple cut them all the smallest and the cleats will hold them in place. So there will be some spacing issues, but if I choose to, I can always caulk this in so that it could still be easily removed when we moved out. So I measured to decide where I wanted these shelves to be because obviously when you sit down on a toilet, you don't wanna hit your head against the back of a shelf. So I wanted that first deep shelf to be above where our head would be so that no one would hit their head on it. And then I divided the space between the ceiling. Again though, I don't want that top shelf to be taller than someone can easily reach without needing a step stool. Otherwise it just becomes something that no one ever utilizes and it becomes a dust magnet. So I divided that top shelf and the bottom shelf and just did my math so that they would be spaced evenly. Once I knew where I was going to put them, I got my support sh strips. In this case, I already had them, but they are, I think, $2 for a four foot strip of one by two. I drilled some holes in them, and then I started attaching them to the wall. Since the measurements were already done, putting these cleats in allowed me to just rest the shelves right on top. And as you can see, it just rests. So. If I want to, I can attach these. I'm gonna see though first how I wanna finish it. I'm kind of not sure, but here they are. Shelf one, shelf two, shelf three. And then I decided I did want something in that space between the deep shelf and the toilet tank. So I put in a six inch shelf so that I could add some small little baskets. While I'm deciding if I want to finish this with a stain, paint, or leave it natural, I'm going to go ahead and stage it right now and put in my things the way I would like. I bought some baskets from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go ahead and utilize those to hide the things we don't want out. 
I have one basket that's just for medicine, another that's just for personal care, one that holds our toilet paper, and one that holds all of our soaps and hair products. So it looks really nice on the shelf and I'm very happy with it. So just a reminder, here is the before. It was functioning, it really was, but it was an eyesore and every time I had to go into the tank, it was a nightmare to take it all apart. So the finished result, I just didn't want to spend any money at all, so I stole decor from other places and I printed two little signs that said the you're gorgeous and the other one was the bathroom sign that I got off of Google and I printed it on vellum and put it on another sign I already had just so until I decide what I want my final decor to look like I've got something that makes it look aesthetically pleasing. I know this is a unique setup in that it has a little closet effect almost and this is the most common shelving I do in closets but if you have an open wall you can absolutely use these types of brackets. Uh, these were from Home Depot and they're about $5 a piece. They're a little bit prettier, but if you have a 99 cent store near you, they sell these brackets as two packs for 99 cents. And these are just as strong. I use these on my coffee bar and I've used them multiple times with clients. Let me see if I can get one out. They have the groove in it to strengthen it. The steel is very strong. They come in four inch on one side and then the other side is six inches. So depending upon what type of shelf you're using. But if you're using a smaller shelf like this one that was only six inches, you could simply do it underneath like that. So Check these out from the 99 cent store. It's a very inexpensive alternative and I'm still deciding if I want to stain it, paint it, or leave it natural. Leave me a comment below what you think. I'm trying to hang a cute little picture right here and I cut my little holes but the nails are so tiny and you might have already known this but if you're having a hard time holding it because it's too small, get yourself a pair of needle nose pliers and hold the nail in place and then you can hammer away without hammering your fingers. Works every time. I've done this cleat system a lot in closets where I walk in and they have a recessed part in one of those sliding door closets that isn't a walk-in. I'll put these in the side so that they're storage for shoes or sweaters or extra items that can go in your closet. I've also done this for broom closets where there really wasn't any other place to have storage for a home. This is a great solution. It's super easy to do. Of course, I made sure that this went into studs, but if you don't have studs to put them in, don't be afraid of using anchors. Uh, but I've always had great success using this. And as you can see, here's my total that I spent. It's a very inexpensive solution and it creates a ton of storage. Please leave me a comment below. Again, I'm still playing. I think I'm gonna stain it, but I'm not quite sure yet. Leave me a comment below on whether you think I should stain it or paint it, but also let me know where you could utilize this type of additional shelving in your home. Please click that subscribe button. I do post, I'm trying to go back to twice a week if I can, uh, but I do at least post once a week and I do videos on organizing DIYs and I love doing craft projects here and there. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.